Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Mighty Misfit Menagerie, or... Gasky. Mm-hmm. Yes. Gasky. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, before I get into what we're doing tonight, just a quick side note. Uh, we had a one-shot on Friday night that was live on Twitch uh, with the Dice Carnival channel as a little collaboration between the... Uh, the group of us. Um, pay no attention to the man adjusting the camera. <laughs> and uh, that will be posted uh, next week on our YouTube as well as on their podcast. So the link to their uh, website that has all of where their podcasts are posted. They're posted like everywhere. It's super easy to find. Uh, will be in the doobly-doo below. Uh, we'll be posting the first half of that. They'll be posting the complete half. And then later we'll be posting the second half as well. So if you do listen to the audio sides of podcasts, please feel free to go give them a listen. They have some great stuff. It's a really Really fun world and we had a, a lot of fun playing with them and uh, with that tonight we will be doing uh, an episode of Rhyme of the Frostman this will be episode 38 followed by a short break and then episode 11 part 4 of <laughs> Deep and Creeping Darkness which Alina will be DMing uh, as I think both of those games kind of left a little bit of a cliffhanger spot. I know, we had a yeah. week yeah. Last, last week. <laughs> so, uh, sure did. <laughs> it was a time. We'll look forward to either resolving those cliffhangers or not or falling off the cliff. <laughs> Coulter, uh, <laughs> Coulter tried to emotionally murder us, and yes. Helena tried to physically murder us <laughs> with emotion. <laughs> Just my favorite way. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, with all the announcements out of the way, shall we turn to uh, all of the viewers' favorite part of the stream, <laughs> the recapitations? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I need to come up with something now to say when you transition over to me now, but... You it, should just go, so this is what happens. Yes. <laughs> picture it now. So what happens was... Everyone, everyone compares you to Ant-Man, so like making it oh. like, like a, a frantic, you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> Things to think about. <laughs> so we continue our dungeon crawl through the Caves of Hunder, Hunger, and actually didn't meet too many baddies. We kind of got to a bunch of dead ends and we're making our way through. We find this weird room with this green cube and we're like, we're not touching that. We threw a rock at it, it sticks to it. Boom, it's a mimic. A spinning one, (laughs) a lovely variation. (laughs) Um, So we take that buddy down and uh, keep on moving. Then we find actually a place of beauty in this very sad, very not beautiful place, uh, a grove of trees and they're alive and they have beautiful purple shimmering fruits growing from them. So we kind of start moseying in. Z's like, what's the, what are these thoughts I'm hearing? Uh, they're nervous thoughts, somebody's here. So he kind of goes up to a tree and he's like, yo, what's up, in, who is in there? <laughs> and a dryad appears, half a wind, and she's like, hey, you're not gonna hurt my trees, are you? And we're like, no. <laughs> He's like, did you get rid of those blood suckers that were in this this these caves? And we were like, yes, we did. <laughs> and she was really nice to us. Um, she let us have some fruit. We each got a magic ability from the fruit. Um, all of them a little different. Were you one of the ones who had the hunger? No, because we we got rid of the hunger. Yeah. So, <laughs> does anybody remember what Hugo's fruit? It was sending. Oh, okay. So he already knows. Sorry, we missed Mark so much that we're all trying to like tell Mark, last week, this last week. I did not compete in that at all, and I'm failed. I failed. Um, I guess I have to buy him a gift now. <laughs> so. What do you buy the man who makes his own leather goods? <laughs> leather. <laughs> no, is it like wool? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <I'm not sure. laughs> <laughs> the conviction. <laughs> Sorry. Luke. Yes, he's famous for that. Okay. Um, okay, so we we're like, hey, Dryad. So we were talking to her, and she was pretty pretty friendly, got the magic. Then we we're like, okay, we gotta go. And she was like, won't you stay with me? But in like a creepy way. And so then we knew we were in trouble. So we try to walk away. She charms Z. And he's like, you're my new best friend, and walks away from us. So Tempest tries to pick him up. He struggles. She doesn't successfully carry him anywhere. So then we're talking to her. We're like, hey, you you can't really do that. You can't really like put magic on people's brains. 
And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. This is my new best friend. <laughs> so Tempest is like, okay, I'm going to hit this tree with my axe if you don't give us our friend back. And she was like, that is a hostile action initiative. <laughs> so we were like, okay, great. So then we started fighting and Molly's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't have to do this. Um, let's just go. I will stay with you. So he swears a blood oath to her. And then he's like, hey guys, I got a plan. Get out of here. And we we're like, uh, I don't love that. Hugo, you stay with him. And he's like, no, seriously, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and we we're like, okay. So we all start leaving. But then it was at this time that Z was like, wait a minute. I'm not charmed anymore. I'm like, what's happening? We're just going to leave. I don't think so. Attack. So then combat resumes. So then Tempest is like, see, are you sure you want to do this? Because, like, I'm with you, man, but maybe we just walk away now. <laughs> and he's like, okay, let's walk away. You going to let us walk away? And she's like, I'll let you walk away. But if I ever see Z again, I'm going to kill him. And Tempest is like, that's too much of an open ending for me. So she resumes combat. Z kills her. Here we are. <laughs> Recapitated. I mean, Z like destroy yeah, 70 70 something two damage points <laughs> <laughs> and that is where we find you i will remind you that i believe several of you did have those pairs so make sure that those are marked um and when we if you eat them going forward we'll find out what they do um and uh i'm gonna give my dogs a moment to calm down i don't know if all of you can hear the uh, mad barking that is happening outside, but I, they probably see a friend walking past the house and they're very <laughs> sad. Um, and with that, we find all of you in the smoldering ashes as the trees have regained the frost on all of their leaves, almost immediately looking worse for wear from the loss of their keeper. Well, first Why off, keep going this way. First off, is there anything you would have done during that situation before this point? I would have offered to stay. Okay. Like wholeheartedly offered to stay after a quest is done. But I mean, I feel like she wouldn't have accepted that since mm -hmm. I wasn't going to stay now. No, yeah, she needed yeah. somebody right now. Okay. Oh, because we kind of had you be impartial mm -hmm. during everything. Because I was like, I don't really know what he would do, but I feel yeah. like he would stay back. But I tried to, I tried to do my best. <laughs> I'll put my hand on Z's shoulder firmly. I understand why you did that, and it wasn't right. The magic she used on you. I respect your actions. I do not agree with them. And it pains me that this forest has lost its patron. It pains me too. I hope maybe we can find a way to save this forest. How can we trust that? As Molly stands up, clearly upset. How can we trust anything you've said? Up until now, you claim that she did something awful to you. Well, you're culturally different from us. You do things that are culturally awful to other people. You literally murdered a person and destroyed something that was seemingly eternal in a place that is blasted by nothingness. And you just destroyed it because you had a feeling? You had a, a little bit of a feeling about it. <laughs> yeah. Molly, it's, it happened and we need to move forward. And once our quest is done, you and I will stay with this grove. The grove is dead. I will see if I can fix the grove and you swore your blood oath to it. So we will be its new caretakers once our quest is finished. I started on this quest and I followed because I wished to make amends to Ten Towns. And I was naive as to the nature of heroism. And if it involves 
destroying things that should be preserved. I don't know if, I don't know if we're on the right side of things. If the Frost Maiden would preserve such a place and keep it from withering and dying, I, I don't know if I can be a murderer for no other reason than somebody has upset me. How long until one of us does something to upset Z and then we get blasted to hell and back? There's a difference between someone upsetting me and someone attempting to control me against my will. What if she had later turned me against you guys? But that situation was no longer happened. It was resolved peacefully. Sure, I was going to break my blood oath for a time, and that was wrong, just to come and join you and then return afterwards. Uh, and she may have destroyed me for that, but that would have been my consequence. I don't get what... So, based on her words, I would leave this cave. I would go off wherever this cave goes. If at any point I have to return to this grove to go down a different path, she would have destroyed me. We could have cast invisibility on you. We could have turned you into a mouse. A fake creature can't see through that? Not particularly. It's not a known ability that all have that. Because you know everything about everything that's right. Well, at least I would have discussed it with the group before destroying a living creature. No one else had to fight. No one else did. Other people attempted to. I would have. I, I take responsibility for I, that. I told Z that I have his back and would stand with him, whichever decision he makes. I think this situation was awful. I don't think we came out the better of this in any way, shape, or form. However, I think we need to remember that what we're going for is good. And remember how we've helped 10 towns so far? We're, we're gonna fix everything. And sure, Casualties along the way. That happens. What about the rest of the ecosystems that are being destroyed by our reels never ending winter? What about the we this one grove, but there's forests dying everywhere. There's people dying everywhere because this winter is never ending. And how did destroying this grove work in one way or the other? Because how did this solve to, anything? Because we got to progress and move closer to our goals. Casualties We're happen. already progressing towards our goals. Then let's keep progressing as I, as Altus turns and tries to But what about the next forward. time? Every step of this journey has been about making a decision of uh, who's right, who's wrong, which culture is bad, which culture is good. I, I can agree with some of them. The elk tribe tried to kill us, so we fought back. We just defended our, no, the tiger tribe, I apologize. Uh, so we fought back. And we defended ourselves. The Druagar had grave, grave uh, plans for ten towns, and obviously that should have been done. But there's other situations. Uh, uh, imagine if Ammajuk had just suddenly decided to drown us because he disagreed with our opinions. <laughs> Malai, do you remember before we had cured Hugo, you had expressed an idea that Hugo was completely against mm -hmm. because that was your perspective and your prerogative. And I told you that was a dumb idea. And we did not do it. I'm sorry, I'm lost. Oh. And Altus kind of looks down in size. Malai suggested that we just kill you for the better of the party. Ah. Uh, kill and then resurrect, as that was your plan to begin with, was that if he died, you would resurrect him against his wishes. And so I, that was purposefully villainizing on your part. And I, I'm just trying to get you to see perspective. You yes. disagree with what Z did, and I disagreed with your idea. If Z destroyed her to save my life and make sure that I would have been better, that would have been one thing. He did not do that, did you see? I did it so that she would not control me or control anyone else against their will because no one should have their free will taken away from them. So it was selfish. 
Partially, yes. But it was also for anyone else that comes through here. Who knows how many people would come through here to see this uh, agreeably beautiful forest and then be stuck here forever in her games. No one's seen her for thousands of years, she said. Yes, but if once we save the rest of Ten Towns and we take away this winter and people can come visit this place, who's to say she's not going to do this again? Who's to say anyone should visit this place? We should be visiting this place. You know, then why are you here? Then what's her existence matter? What does any of our existence matter then? So then what does it matter that we killed her? You know because what? she was, it was peaceful, it was murder, it was not adventure. She, it was self-defense. She made the first aggressive move. You cannot convince us that she didn't. Just From, because you don't understand the importance of free will I to do, a person. I do understand that what she did was wrong. What I'm saying is, is that what she did to her was innocent. And that, and, and that is why if she had not released Z, of course, yes, I would support destroying her. But she did. It was resolved. Well, I wish we had the luxury and the time to carefully consider every action we make. We're doing the best we can to help this place. If you have not noticed that by now, then I don't know what we can say to convince you. We're doing the best we can. Tempest has it exactly right. I won't take death threats against me. Especially when I'm trying to help the greater good. If I was a criminal and I deserve to die, then that's something different. But when someone threatens me, even though I'm trying to help the greater good, and threatens me not even for doing anything violent towards them, if I'm trying to just pass through this area and she decides to try to kill me, I'm not allowed to defend myself. Didn't you threaten her grove? I did. To try and get her to release C. Yeah. And I would have gone through with that threat. I take so responsibility for that too. Should we then kill Tempest? For she threatened someone's life? She didn't threaten anyone's life. The tribe cannot live without its grove. So if she had destroyed it. She threatened it from a place of protecting one of us. But do you not see how she might have seen you as a threat to her grove? Sure, but let me pass unless I destroy it. If she had said, you may pass through here if you need to get to these different caverns, but don't touch my grove, fine. I won't touch the grove. But for merely coming into her presence ever again, having a death sentence over my head, not acceptable. And I would have done the same if she had said, put a death sentence on any of your heads too. Because hmm. it's a threat against my family. I find that hard to believe. Find what hard to believe? Never mind. No, explain it to me. If you're so smart, explain this to me. Explain to me what I'm not getting. I just don't know. You claim... <sighs> I am not good at this. I'm... Okay. I don't... I, I, maybe I'm missing a subtlety here that the rest of you see. I, I, I do not know. All I know is that if we get to Yethrin and it comes down to a beautiful, the only place we can ever explore and a whim, I can't handle that anymore. A I, whim of what? Destruction. So if we need to destroy Yethrin to save the entirety of the Icewind Dales and the entirety of the northern portion of our homeland, your homeland, not even my homeland, because I'm not from here. To be honest, I'm the only one who this is their homeland. Hmm. That's not necessarily true. Other people have made this no, their no, home. No, no, I mean, of the group. That's what I'm saying. Other people have made it their home. Um, so if it comes between destroying Yethrin and saving countless lives, you would save Yethrin. If the Frost Maiden would let humans return to the Sword Coast, I don't see why they shouldn't leave. They should just leave the North. It wasn't theirs in the beginning. Was it anything theirs in the beginning? The Yeti have been here. So why do you fight with us, Molly? Redemption. But Against I, what? It's personal. 
Okay. Oh, so you've made mistakes. Yes. He doesn't have to share them with us. It's not... It's... I would freely share them with anyone, but... Well... I just don't necessarily want to share them with someone who is a hypocrite. So you will freely share them with anyone but not me. Okay. So... I'm moving forward. If anyone would like to come with me and hopefully take down Ariel and bring back life to this area, please follow. I won't stop anyone who doesn't want to. I'm gonna move off. I'm gonna just, we're doing the best we can. We're doing the best we can as I follow. Molly, we're gonna have a talk after this. But we need to push on. Mm-hmm. I do not. And I will start tending to the trees. <laughs> I will meet you after the quest. Altus, Tempest, yes. and of course also Hugo, but I've said this to you previous. I want you to know that knowing you has been one of my life's joys. And I'm sorry that I cannot pay the price that you are willing to pay. But I have already sullied my hands too much to watch the world be destroyed and its great wonders. I cannot. I am not a strong hero. I'm but a very small man. And as your friend would say it, a very small man in a very big metal body. (laughs) And... I think the fact that you care so much about beings that... She's not innocent. But beings who are not out to to, to kill. And I think that's heroic, that you care about her. None of us wanted what happened but if you feel like you need to stay here i hope we can part on (sighs) on neutral terms if not good ones you will always be a sister to me tempest thank you for all that you've done with us Mm -hmm. i think that you underestimate how much good we've done and i hope that you see that one day and altus you've always been like a brother-in-law to me Malai, I I hope you do know that we've done good. I hope you understand that we press on to keep doing good. And you've opened my eyes to a lot. And for that, I thank you. And I wish you nothing but good. And I hope someday you may adventure alongside us again. And I understand if you choose not to, but know that if you ever choose to, there's a there's a spot with us, me. So I kind of look around and see who's still standing around. I've stopped. I'm just standing there. Okay. <laughs> once, once the grove is gone, I will return to the Illusion Engine and live there. So if you seek me after your quest, I will be there. I kind of pull out my notebook that I take notes in sometimes and I write that down. And (laughs) And Hugo, (laughs) uh, if it wasn't for you, I don't think I would have realized what I was doing was as wrong as it was. When we met, I was in the throes of creation and you helped me to see that there was another way and that balance is important. Well, little man, I'll see you soon. Well... We'll repair this grove, and we'll keep you to that blood oath. Well, I appreciate your optimism, but I cannot share in it. Z is going to walk back, open the bag of holding, pull out the chest with that book in it, set it down next to Molly, not look at Molly, turn around and stop and say, I hope someday we can understand each other. I'm going to walk away. <laughs> Even whalers are trying to feed their families. Oh, whalers. I, 
chose that reference because of Amaduke. Meaning, but whalers meaning people who kill whales, right? Okay. Yeah. I'm just sure. It's like, wow, he's defending whalers, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Nina. Well, I'll be quiet. As <laughs> all of you turn to begin down that first clockwise tunnel, beginning the rest of your journey, one member short, and Malai disappears into the grove. Volin comes out of the tunnel and says, oh, well, this one's empty. Sorry, you were talking for a bit, so I decided I'd, uh, you know, continue what we're here for. Oh, okay. We're coming, we're coming. Can we take a minute for me to just say, I love you, Hank. I just, oh, I know. Uh, Male hates Z. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Z hates Male. So there's no love lost there. Okay. I just want everyone in the audience to know that no. there's nothing between me oh, and Hank. Not. I love him like Same. a brother. <laughs> I just, <laughs> we're not meant to be, we're not meant to be adventuring partners. <clears throat> I want to apologize in advance for my insensitivity. I am very tired, <laughs> and this has been a very stressful journey, and... What do you think, Valin? We killed her, right? We should have done that? I <laughs> had no qualms with the action that was taken, if that is the question. Mm. Why does that make me not feel any better? Damn this world that makes <laughs> us make these decisions. Valin, I, I appreciate your... your... Uh, forewarning. Um, if in the next <coughs> bits of the journey I'm a little short or cold to you, I apologize. We've just, uh, we've seen some things now. Oh, I prefer it. Cuts the niceties. And I believe you all wanted to go clockwise, or did you have another direction? Mm. Would it be reasonable to say clockwise as we've been going through the, like, would we still be yeah. able to track? I mean, right? well, yeah, if you pick any point, you keep going keep the one to the right. Okay. Yeah. You can you just clockwise. As double checking. she looks around the four of you, not seeing Molly anymore. Oh! I'm sorry, I left for the end. Uh, he's not coming? No. Huh. He's chosen his own path. You're all generally such um, a huggy bunch. I just kind of assumed it would resolve itself after I returned. That's uh, it's a shame. Well, yes. as I have taken the last path, I will let one of you select the next. I'll go down that one. Oh wait, this is where she went? Yes. Okay. She said it was a dead end. Yes. Right? Oh, like all of this here? Mm -hmm. okay. It was empty caves of ice and not even ones with methods on the icicles. Unfortunate. This place is a damn maze. Uh, as you begin down this tunnel, it almost immediately curves, and then nearly immediately curves again. Um, the path seems kind of winding, and as you make your way through it, it steadily becomes darker and darker. At the pace that you all are keeping, as it wins its way down, after 15 minutes of walking, you have still not reached the end. Hmm. Looks like he can't control Tempest. Weird. <laughs> oh God, I signed it under Hank, so that might be why. Well, he was doing it last week. <laughs> At this point in the tunnel, there begins to be a breeze from ahead. Whoa. Uh, this might be oh, the end of our man. entrance. <laughs> There's the... <laughs> we should be good now. There's the end. Uh, I don't I'm know if this is right, guys. If this is the fucking entrance, <laughs> I'm gonna scream. Wait, is it? I don't know. Well, I suppose there's one way to find out. Um, yeah. so you said it's dark? Yes. So I have 300 feet of darkness. Who else? No, I'm saying up to, I have if I'll we just, get up to that end I there. Oh, so I think the, the tunnel only, continues only. off the map. <laughs> nice. So what happened? I was just asking who has dark vision. Oh, so. he's like, <laughs> everyone oh. but Molly. 
The the so tunnel um, continues off the map. Oh, got it. Yeah. Well. So can we make some kind of check that, I don't know, determines where this is going? I mean, meta, we don't know that this map exists, and so we don't know that this is anything different, so uh, we should just keep going. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. okay. I hate that, but... <laughs> Uh, just keep pushing forward. So I will, for how long? Because it's been 15 minutes now. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, I guess we could just go for another. Do you want to set a time? Like we go for half an hour and then if we don't find anything, we turn back or. Yeah. So like if we could make a guess on how far we would get in a half hour, does that seem far enough? What if she can walk a mile? And so again, I'm like, do, is there a check we can make? Our map maker just left us, so. <laughs> I, uh... Well, I would've given you my map. <laughs> oh, okay, thanks. Of everything that we've done. So, so looking at the right? map, and based on everything we've explored so far, does this feel like the right way to go, I guess, would be what I'm wondering. So, I, history, I don't know. Um, oh, yeah. I'd, you could make uh, either a survival or a history check. Okay, I'm gonna do a survival. Well, he's gonna go Cooper. Can I also do a survival? Sure. Or a nature, I guess. Whatever. Seven. Yeah, the breeze. That makes sense. Let's okay. keep going towards that. You got a sixteen. Okay. The what was yours? Seven. Okay. Um. So, yeah, Tempest. That breeze is very distracting <laughs> after being in the stagnant air for yeah, so long. Really good. Um. You go, uh, you remember that you were told to go down, and there have been several steps downward here. Although the cave almost feels as if it doubles back on itself multiple <laughs> times, um, it does feel as though it's lowering. Uh, it seems like the right way we're going down, so... Um, did we encounter the other big things in this cave last time? Or like... Or the Razzmatazz? Nope. We have not hit the yet. No Razzmatazz last time. Uh, so I suppose we keep forward? So I, I would say, like, let's go the equivalent of a day's journey down this? Does that sound reasonable? Like, or, yeah. okay. Yeah, All right. <laughs> yeah, because a day. And then we'll Target rest <laughs> down in this black and yeah. come As back? I don't know. As you all make that choice and continue the tunnel, the winding begins to taper as the tunnel straightens out further and further and begins to widen. And about 15 minutes after you stopped, okay. <laughs> the tunnel opens up. <gasps> oh my. The tunnel Whoa. opens into so a vast grotto enclosed by gleaming ice. Consigned to this frozen sepulchre is a fantastic city sculpted by ancient magic and illuminated in a haunting way by green and purple lights that shed no warmth. The city is slightly tilted, hmm. its spires leaning away from you as though recoiling from your presence. You stand atop a causeway of frost covered ice that stretches toward the city like the dead frozen tongue of some kind of hideous behemoth out of whose mouth you've just stepped. <sighs> Welcome to Yithrin. Wow. Wow. I definitely think that we should tell them all this is here. When we leave. We return journey, yes. I know he was sworn to protect the growth, but maybe letting him explore a day or two might do him good. Maybe you can figure out a way to bring the dryad back. I will say, oh. just for all of your knowledge, um, the with the city being well lit, everything on the map here you can see mm -hmm. from the ice bridge. Where so we stand. are, you are here. here. Okay. Oh, that's the tongue. So, I, okay, we start towards the gra towards it. <laughs> I, what's this? That looks interesting. Let's go there. Oh wait, Valin, do you know where we should go? I believe 
that the spire may be the best bet for anything directly useful. You, generally speaking, the Mithilar would be somewhere near that location, but I have a feeling that it may not be so easy to reach as just walking up. So perhaps if we can get a feel for how the city has come. You think there's like magical booby traps? I wouldn't put it past the netheries, it seems. Uh, security measures make total sense, and we don't know if there are any leftovers from the crash. I wonder if we got rid of all the nasties, or if there's a few waiting in here. I think we should be prepared for anything. I think we got rid of most of the natural nasties now. It's mostly going to be magical, maybe. Okay, I head towards the spire. <laughs> okay. Are we trying to sneak or anything, or just going? I guess I'll put that to the Should group. You, are you asking? Because um, okay. I can cast my spell to help us on it, or if we just want to kind of blow past. I say we probably just blow past and save mm-hmm. spell slots just in case. Yeah. Yeah, we are now down one. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so you're going to go ahead and enter without the pass of the trees? Um, I'm going to do a bag of tricks. Thingy. Just to get some extra. Some extra body. Giant rat. <laughs> okay. Oh, nice. my favorite. As the giant rat materializes into the icy bridge beside you. And we'll go figure out what they do. Getting closer to the edge of the bridge here, you can see those green and purple lights closer up, casting this otherworldly glow upon the frost draping the silent city. Clawing spires, broken domes, and steeples leaning at odd angles around a huge citadel. At the foot of this causeway, a giant statue lies prone and motionless, its surface gleaming with rhyme. I'm not touching things. Does anybody think this is anything? Uh, can we read it? I'm just realizing oh, I just uh, <laughs> They're using rhyme and frost kind of interchangeably. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, no, we're fucked with that model. <laughs> <laughs> I just never realized how much you guys relied on it. <laughs> cast detect magic. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Um, as soon as you cast it, your entire vision just goes white with how much magic is around every surface around you. And it takes a moment for your senses to even out enough to be able to differentiate shapes and, uh, and directions and colors and different notations. And as it does so, there is no magic on the statue. Uh, it seems that the statue is the only thing around here that's not magical. <laughs> I touch it. <laughs> the very real physical trap. <laughs> Clamps down on your arm. <laughs> Big trap. Closer to it now, uh, it <clears throat> appears to be a faceless, misshapen stone giant. Yeah. Giant made of stone, not stone giant. <laughs> One. Any insight? Well, it doesn't look like something they would have carved based on what little history remains. Do you think it was made into stone? I think that's more reasonable. Hmm. Professor Scant pipes up after having been quiet for uh, quite a while now. Oh! It looks like a, a, a dead tomb tapper, if I had to answer to guess. A what? Tomb tapper. Tapper of tombs. Tomb tapper. Like a tap tap? Uh, well, uh, like tap tap. Fairly hideous beasts. Um, generally have a mouth in their center. And he walks over and hovers, walks, hovers over, and uh, his light casts down on the sort of misshapen midsection of the beast. 
where you can see a small um, seam within the stone. So... Nasty creatures. How uh, prevalent are those in Yithrin? Well, uh, before the fall or presently? If you know presently, then... That I don't. Okay. But, uh, before the fall, not terribly prevalent. So what would have turned this thing to stone? Death? Death generally decomposes, correct? Creatures created by arcane means often have different forms of um, decomposition Fair enough. than carbon-based life forms such as yourself. Um, can I do an arcana check to see if that's something that generally is true? I'm just scared that there's something that's turning thing to stone out here. Like a... Like a Medusa, or... Uh, what's it called? The, the Basilisk. Uh, basilisk. Oh. Gorgon, too. Gorgon. Giant mechanical bull that breathes petrified It's breath. mechanical? Well, it's construct, technically. Mm. It's made out of brass. As you all begin to examine the creature, we will take a moment um, to turn to Fieldhelm. Yeah. The pathway <laughs> through the caves that you found yourself in mm. after having been chased by a horde of drow that were surprisingly well armed. Yes. I mean, where were they buying these? <laughs> has begun to narrow. Ooh. And as you wend your way through, it gets so tight that there is just space for your own width. The drow behind you, not knowing whether they're continuing to pursue, you find yourself at a solid wall of ice. Oh no. With dim shapes flickering somewhere beyond it. Um, um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just at such a loss. Um, uh, uh. How thick is the ice? It's difficult to tell, but you know that it's thin enough that you can see light sources behind it. Okay. Um, hmm. Sorry, new character, who this? Uh, I will cast Detect Thoughts. And that is 30 feet? 30 feet, yes. Um, I'm hoping that the ice is thin enough yeah. that my magic will get through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How thick? Is, is there like a... Um, it's one foot, I believe. Uh, well, but if I can see light through it, it should be less it than It depends. Foot. So it's, it's like clear ice. Um, two feet of rock or two inches of metal. And as ice is a mineral, <laughs> then it should be two it's feet. not a mineral. Um, water is lava. <laughs> you can feel that the spell is not blocked by the ice, but no more than that do you feel thoughts beyond it. Oh, right. Well, that was a waste. Um, let's see. What else do I have here? Did that one. Uh, all right, so I am going to. Oh no, that takes too long. I'm talking to myself. Uh, well, uh, oh, he vocation has never been my strong suit. Uh, I'm going to take my quarterstaff and try and beat my way through the ice because I literally have no spells to get through this. Go ahead and make an intelligence check for me. Okay. I could do that. <laughs> you already had a practice of doing that? Yeah. Uh, that'll be 19. Okay, so from where you are, as you examine this sheet of ice, it begins to become more and more clear that the curve of the cave wall goes downward, meaning that likely the base is the thinnest portion. Okay. Um, so if you can break through that, the whole thing might come tumbling. Okay. Um, well, uh, I do have... Um, hmm, uh, let's see. Uh, like, literally, I don't even have Firebolt. Like, I took Chill Touch and Mind Slipper. I was like, oh, man, I was not prepared for an ice wall. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to attack it with my quarter staff. Um, uh Do you have a third character lined up? 
<laughs> Just I <guess>. do. <laughs> As you hear the drow. <laughs> So that would be fourteen. All right, hits. Uh, and then it's a one d ten. And did we collectively decide if we can use our inspiration dice on damage or just d twenty rolls? Oh, uh, I I'm fine with no damage. Oh, I need it right now. You're welcome. Shepherd gave me. Ah. Was that you? <laughs> I thought it was Shep. <laughs> Seventeen. All right. Uh, plus. I'm pretty sure plus zero. Never mind. I don't know what I'm looking for. <laughs> using, using your intelligence check to find the weakest point, you stab the staff into the base of this ice wall, and there is a loud <laughs> as it goes all the way up it, and half of the slab falls outward with a loud thud that reverberates throughout the glacial tomb of Yithrin as you step out the other side. The rest of you hear an immense thud <laughs> that reverberates through the glacial tomb of Yithrin. Do we know what as direction? Behind you, the tunnel out which you came has a slab of wall come slamming down into it. Uh, um, send the weasel off, or Mr. Radigan, to it. Look, Mr. Rattigan. Professor, excuse you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Right? Uh, Freedom, as you begin to open out into this tunnel and get your first glimpses of the majesty that is this entombed city, a giant rat comes walking towards you. <laughs> Mr. Tits! And then I'm gonna uh, chill touch it. <laughs> <laughs> What's chill touch? Right. Uh, neck and necrotic damage. Roll the hit? Or is that a save? I do not remember. <laughs> Nat 20. Oh, boy. Oh, this is a great first impression. <laughs> you killed my rat. I, well, I do say Mistress Tits. <laughs> as, as all of you hear, Mistress Tits! <laughs> and, uh, my rat dies. Yeah. <laughs> Right. I'm not gonna make you roll for that because I think the base damage is enough to kill a giant. Base damage rat. is 16. So. Yeah. yeah, no. <laughs> uh, as your rat suddenly falls down onto its belly and poofs out of existence, the flutter of uh, fabric landing on the ground. In front of. Friedhelm, would you like to describe yourself as the party first sees you slay? Uh, Friedhelm has a, a very meticulously carved into like a fun shape, uh, uh, kind of like that one guy from... Anyway, uh, carved shape, no mustache. Uh, it, it seems like a personal choice, but if you look closely, it's very clear he cannot grow any hair right here. So he tries to pass it off as a personal choice. He doesn't wear traditional wizard's robes, but he definitely has the flowiness on the sides to give the illusions of robes, but still give him the ability to move his legs. Uh, he's dressed rather nicely in, in fine clothes. Um, sticking out of his waistcoat and his winter clothes is a little owl's head uh, in uh, pure black with little green eyes. Um, that is Thurgood. Uh, and he carries a uh, very, very ostentatious staff. And uh, he has uh, <coughs> on his hip, his uh, spell book, chained to his hip, so he always has it available. And you hear from across the pillar as Valin goes, Oh. You made it this far. Ah, Lady Harbell! <laughs> and he will uh, 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 rush forward. There was a giant rat back there. Did you see the size of the thing? How is it even feeding down here? <laughs> uh... Uh, is this another shoot? Oh, course? hello. Uh, my name is Friedhelm Eldrichel, uh, a, a junior member of the Arcane Brotherhood. How are you? Uh, uh, abjuration specialist. Uh, he is, uh, he's harmless, as far as we go. Did, did he say Arcane Brotherhood? Yes. A junior member. Uh, I'm mostly a professor at the Eldrichel uh, Academy in Waterdeep. Uh, I, I teach abjuration. Mm. Protection. To who? Uh, students who wish to learn magic. Oh, that makes sense. 
Uh, you may recognize my my surname, Eltuchil. I mean, I do know, uh, but we are not in Waterdeep, so I do not expect any kind of special treatment or or praise of any kind. I'm I'm just here like the rest of you to see this great and wondrous city. <laughs> Killing rats, apparently. Yes. Well, it, it was coming right for me. Did you not see how aggressive that thing was? It was, it? was ours. Oh my. Um, As he's hmm. pulling another fuzzy thing out. <laughs> <laughs> Can I make an arcana check? Sure. Because it wouldn't have left a body behind, right? No, no, it basically no. just puffed back into a piece of fabric and drifted to down to the uh, snow. So that would have been 15 plus 20 plus. 15 plus 20 over. No, 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 no it's over. Yeah, you would, you would be able to recognize, especially with Z standing there pulling oh. out another puff Oh, ball. hopefully it wasn't a familiar, it was just a summoned creature, correct? Well, as I'm throwing a little puff ball down that turns into a giant badger. Ah, a bag of tricks. Oh, well, I feel much better. Uh, it wasn't named or had a family or anything. I mean, it was named. Now it never will. Okay. Oh, I seem to have gotten off on the wrong foot. Uh, <laughs> Valin, uh, you said that uh, if I waited for you in, in Dugan's Hall that you would return in a, in a week, but uh, when you didn't return, I feared the worst. Dugan's Hall. Explains a lot. I was trying to leave him safe, and um, should we leave him safe again? I don't think I that think is... you are all meaning to speak in another language, so I don't understand what you're saying, um, uh, but you are not. I don't think it's possible, and I do think that begrudgingly his skill set would be useful to all of you especially. Um, Volin, do you vouch for I I don't trust the Brotherhood? Oh, I'm Valin's apprentice within the Arcane Brotherhood, so yeah. I, I, I'm, I, I have to be with her uh, or else uh, it, my tenure doesn't count. I vouch for his trustworthiness. All, all right, right then. Uh, I, I do apologize for before. I Altus, Altus Mendax. <laughs> Altus Mendax, you wrote that novel. <laughs> oh, one of my cousins got arrested and executed because of you, but he was a prick. <laughs> well, then you're welcome. <laughs> uh, Friedhelm uh, uh, Altucher. Mm. Uh, did you say, I'm sorry, did you say we're wearing a mask? Of some kind? No. You said something was ornately carved. His beard. His beard is. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, like, think Hunger Games. Like, it's like, has like swirls okay. and stuff in it. Like, he's definitely a fancy boy. Okay. <laughs> I kind of put my hand in shot. I like your nice little beard. Oh, thank you. Uh, it is uh, quite difficult to maintain uh, in the tundra, but I get around. See, he starts laughing and then just makes his beard grow like that. <laughs> and then makes go away. And then I smack Zeon. Transmutation. Uh, sure, something like that. Um, oh. Neshazi. Neshazi. I'm not familiar with that. Is that um, uh, Chult? Mm, sure. Because uh, you are uh, Yuanti, correct? Sure. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Zeon is just like. Just a leader. Mm, nice to meet you. You as well. Uh, and. Campus. Oh. I think he's almost like slaps the cap here right now because so much ha has happened and he's just like another fucking dude just shows up. All right, cool. Let's, let's just <laughs> like go. Process right <laughs> this <laughs> might as well happen. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> We're five minutes it's overdue fun. for any party member. Like, let's just. Uh, anyway, Glenn, I do not believe we should stay in the era too terribly long as there were quite a lot of drow in that cavern. Um, so if if uh, if we have a goal in mind, I will follow you. Oh, the drow aren't an issue anymore, I don't believe. Uh, what? you all thought Duragar. Ah. Or, well, I can I go to towards where he came out of? Can I see or hear any drow coming? Uh, there is no audible sound down that tunnel right now. How close to a rest are we? Like, how, how long have we been adventuring since the last <laughs> round? <laughs> 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 what? You guys, you didn't rest uh, after any of the stuff with the Dryad. Um, so at this point, I mean, you have been adventuring for eight to ten hours, okay. if not more. I'm going to do my whole, um, uh, 
wall of water, and then um, ice knife to seal off the tunnel. Okay. So if any drow are following, they all yeah, being comfortable. Uh, seeing you do that, oh, fascinating. And I will cast Chromatic Orb so you don't have to do mm. ice knife. <laughs> Uh, so that, yeah, that immediately seals it with thicker ice than was previously there. So you were confident that another uh, staff blow would not be able to take it down in a similar way. Also, it is now opaque. Hmm. Nice. So are we now getting chased by drow? Well, hopefully they'll lose the scent after they see the wall. I am I have faith in the in the wall. I just... Yeah, they can't I'm, know this place is here. Yeah, I feel like they're or they'd already be here, right? Yeah, good point. Good point. Okay. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention this detail, but Friedhelm's backpack is floating next to him as if worn by somebody else. As he um, has an unseen servant that carries all his stuff. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I want, I don't want Valin to be mean to him, but oh, no. Valin it's and a so, fancy boy, I it's don't so think easy. this is going to work out. Like. I'm pretty sure whoever assigned Friedhelm to Valin just did, did it. it to fuck with her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like her punishment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I did already set up in the backstory that she literally abandoned him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, shall we find a place to rest before we march to our deaths? Oh, I feel quite fresh. We oh, good for you. Um, we could, we could some, use a rest. <coughs> some stuff happen. Oh, very well. Uh, I will follow your lead, uh, Master. You really do not need to call me that. <gasps> And as if seeing the, you found it! And he goes to Professor Scant and just kind of like spins around him. Oh, oh. <laughs> so it was real after all. Why do none of you treat me like this? This is exactly the reverence that I deserve. Excitement Jesus. and joy. Oh, how much of your functionality has been restored? Your, your, your speaking voice is so clear. I assure you, I am completely functional in every way, shape, or form. More functional than you will ever be as mortal. I agree. Obviously. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> so, uh, just push it down. <laughs> no, 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 stop, 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 stop. The, the, the grease from your hands is terrible for his varnish. <laughs> I like this one. <laughs> okay. I'm well, going to sit down and start eating some uh, jerky. Okay. <laughs> Did you like the codicil as well? Um, oh, oh Valencia like, still does have that. I'll just sit next to you and it's like. <gasps> tucks it back inside the bag. That's fair. Uh, uh, was it really? Did you did you did you take the ship? The ship, the, the prison ship, or or whatnot that you were. We seeing? took a whale. <gasps> you found Omnijuke. Well, thanks to these folk. Oh, he must have had so many wonderful things to tell you. He was great. Oh yes. If we are resting, I I, I would love to hear of what has transpired since we separated. <laughs> As. Uh, <laughs> I mean, after the, the disaster, it was hard to get, uh, you know, I escaped Dugan's Hole and I figured the worst that, that you had fallen. So I took it upon myself to to make my way to the Regged Glacier. And I, I without the codicil, obviously, I could not get in. Um, but then I fell through a crack in the ice and wouldn't you know it, ended up in... in well, the rest is not polite. <laughs> As you all sit down to rest, Valin gives a slow and very sparse telling of what she has been doing since she left her apprentice in Dugan's Hole uh, with lots of... Oh, it was terribly boring. I, I can't remember that portion of it. And then continuing on through as she casts sort of sideways glances at all of you, like, do not fucking say a word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and as you all take a rest, uh, I was just like, I need a super brief bio break. So I'm just going to go take care of that really quick. And we will be right back in a moment. Cast. <laughs> stop back to it, y'all. <laughs> Uh, welcome back <laughs> from our brief break. Thank you for your patience. We appreciate all of you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, with that, you have completed your short or long rest. Long. I think we were going long rest. Okay, and you guys were all uh, outside of, um, like, staying on that ice bridge, or did you move into the city? I think just outside of the city on the ice bridge. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Excellent. Um, how are you setting up watches for this rest? As I'm fresh, I'll take a watch. Yeah. Right. I'll take one too. Otherwise, I'll still get. If we switch off, we'll still get full rest, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Volin is also beat and lays down to sleep as Professor Scant hovers silently next to whoever oh, is taking the watch. So <laughs> Me and that boy. I meld into stone just hearing them talk. Not being able to sleep. <laughs> um, on, uh, can I get a perception check from Freedom for the first watch? Yes. <clears throat> uh, sorry, new character sheet for this. <laughs> Nothing has changed about how the joke. character sheet, sheet, sheet works, <laughs> uh, but I completely forgot how to do it. Ooh, three. Uh, you are too character. absorbed with yeah. Professor Scant, and he is too excited about having somebody who is finally interested in listening to his detailed opinions on Ithrin uh, that you don't notice anything. And as the time goes by, uh, you wake up on your own, uh, Z, to remember to take the watch. Um, and swapping out, uh, Professor Scant twiddles uh, away, continuing the last story that he was telling Friedhelm before he went for his rest, uh, before realizing your lack of attention and slowly trailing off into, well, we'll talk about it another time. And may I get a perception check? Yeah. Nineteen. Um, as you are watching, keeping an eye on both the cave behind you and the city ahead, uh, the cave is deathly quiet. Um, it appears that the wall has worked, and there is not a pursuer coming down that long mile of dark tunnel. On the side of the city, you can see that those glowing orbs that have given the light by which you can see throughout the entire cavern slowly shift in color as if marking the passage of time, remaining in that field of blue and green and purple as they shift from warm tones to cool tones throughout the process. Um, at the same time, within that light are shadows, and you can see shapes far off enough to be fairly indiscernible, but definitely something moving within the city, making its way between those pinpricks. But nothing looks like it's coming towards us. They're just moving throughout the city. Okay. So, <clears throat> okay. The numbers are sparse, mm -hmm. but there is something here. Okay. Um, I think I'll wait until everyone wakes up and we'll talk about it. Because right now, if nothing's coming towards us, I don't want to interrupt everyone. Okay. Well, the rest of your watch goes uneventful as though the passage of time is difficult to tell with no overhead light source to mark it for you, all of you awaken with your rest restored. So I did see some shapes in the city while I was on watch. Oh, it, it seemed maybe shadows. Um, maybe I just couldn't make that out. So maybe they were actually people, but they seemed shadowy and pretty far off. But there was definitely movement in between the lights coming from the city while we were sleeping. Maybe it's one of those grave tappers that you said. Tomb tappers. Tomb tappers. Um, much, much larger as you as he kind of wobbles at that fallen statue, um, which is several feet taller than the size of a humanoid. Perhaps it was one of the other expeditions, Berlin. <laughs> to be perfectly fair, I'm amazed we've made it this far, let alone an additional expedition. Hmm. Uh, Scant, any 
any other creatures we should know about? Any any impending dangers, booby traps of magic, anything like that that you can tell us? My expertise generally lies within the living city. What has happened to it over the course of centuries since its fall? Well, would those, if there are any magical traps, would those have lasted these many years? The Netherese were incredibly powerful mm. casters. It is entirely possible that if the security measures were left in place, they could still stand. Though the great question would lie in the Mithlar, as it was what failed to bring the city down and was generally used to keep spells working. But we've seen already from your spell restoration tower that some of the artifacts are intact despite damage. You didn't mention that you found a spell restoration tower? It's, it was functional? Uh, not anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it gave us a, uh, some of our magic back. We used the magic up. That's, that's gone now. Oh, well, uh, I'm sure you recorded it, right, Professor? Uh, <laughs> Volin puts a hand on top of the orb. We had to break through a wall to move further into the dungeon, and it seemed to deactivate the piece. Oh, I'm, I'm sure you had to. Was, I'm, I suppose we could have gone around, but that was the quickest <coughs> way. <laughs> Are you okay? Uh, fine. I'm just a little, you know, snake tongue caught in my throat. I recorded the geometric shapes that were painted along the sides of the beam, which I believe were runes etched into, and he goes into a long explanation. But I believe that the Nithalar would have been what initially cast a spark. Oh, so that long thing to say that there might be traps. <laughs> oh, well, I was speaking of the spell reservation chamber that he wrote as well. But so yes, generally speaking, there, there may be traps. Okay. Yes. So he's going to start walking towards the city again. Okay. <laughs> Um, I believe Tempest had expressed an interest in the treed area over here. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. How would you like to go to there? The city is made up of all of these wide, flat, open avenues with seemingly sectioned off areas um, <laughs> that are demarcated by a lowering step within stone. Um, so you can kind of see, looking at that, that you can go through this area here. It's like a sunken living room situation? Yes, or you can go around it. Oh, interesting. Whether you follow the kind of street section or go through the buildings themselves. I see street (coughs) sections. Let's keep away from the buildings for now. Yeah. You think? I agree. Where did you see the figures in regards to uh, they were, I point to some of the orbs that have the different colors. I was like, they flitted in between these, but I didn't see them go specific places. They just moved. They were, um, fairly like ubiquitous without. Okay. Throughout. So everywhere. Yeah. Small I mean, in numbers, it, but they were definitely okay. I mean, I, and they looked like shadows. They didn't look like people. They looked like. Were they semi-translucent, like I could kind of see through them? Or? You could only see the shapes, so okay. you generally couldn't see through them. Okay, but well, yeah, like when one moved in front of the light, I didn't see light coming through it. It was okay, actually blocked, okay. So I, I'm not sure if it was actual figures or just, you know, they're too far away for me to... Okay. Um, at that point, though, once we get into the city, I'm going to put detect thoughts up. Okay. So it's 30 feet, and obviously since this place is built of metal, It doesn't go through anything. (laughs) As you make your way uh, over stepping onto the platform itself, there is this feeling of charged energy that pushes its way up through your body. It doesn't stop you from progressing, but it is ever present as if there's a light hum. Um, Making your way past, it's clear from above that this on your right is uh, an amphitheater of some sort. And as you pass through it, you can see that it is charged with static. Uh, cracked steps to <laughs> cracked steps exactly. descend to the stadium floor, uh, where tiny glittering objects rest on black pedestals of stone. Uh, three metal masts rise above the arena like gigantic tridents, each one emitting a low hum. 
the branches of each trident are 25 feet off the ground and extended 50 feet into the air. And as you pass it, there's a loud crack as static electricity forms into lightning and zaps from between one of the tridents to another and passes on to the third before dissipating. Uh, Professor, is, is this some kind of sporting arena? Hmm. Uh, it looks to be a chain lightning stadium, if I had to guess. Uh, it was oh, an event that would pit mortals against each other within an electrified arena. During great popularity. Oh, mm-hmm. Was there any Sounds specific? Barbaric. Doesn't oh. sound fun. Is there any specific rules, or or uh, how did one play? Uh, he begins to uh, explain the rules in great detail. <laughs> uh, uh, standing on one side of the arena, you would begin to end as he does that. The rest of you are continuing forward, I assume. Mm-hmm. Uh, Whispered of the wind. Does he have a mute button? I wish. Okay. And as you pass that stadium, uh, you reach a tower with runic symbols um, and several little uh, windows that are still lit from within. The tower reaches upward like a talon, its stonework studded in chiseled ruins. A blue light shines bright from the highest window. Continuing from that tower. Well, I mean, I would ask Professor Scant about the tower. Anything we pass, I'm asking <laughs> Professor Scant about. <laughs> it appeared to be one of the many wizards' towers with him. Although I'm not sure of which it may be. Mm-hmm. What's that dongle oh, thing? I would say if he does point out anything that like sounds suspicious, like we should investigate, that we might talk about that. But you know, like I know our destination is this grove. Well, I mean, I we don't have to go there. No, I, just... I think that's a good starting point. But like, I feel like if anything does pop out that he says, like you know, uh, maybe we discuss. But based on the rune and my knowledge of Nathalie's writing, I believe this would be a tower of abjuration. <gasps> what? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Fred. Fred. Fred Hein. Can we stop, please? <sighs> Field trip. Guys, what? How close are we to our end goal? I look past Professor Scant to Volvo. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, she points forward where you can see like the giant spiring tower, but with no uh, directly discernible entrance. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, we're sort of shooting fish in a barrel here. There's an endless amount of things to discover. We don't exactly know where that end point will be. And if there's an abjuration tower, there might be a necromancy tower. Maybe (laughs) checking these towers out might grant us a little insight into the main tower, so it can't hurt to go around. Maybe there's some of those fancy flying cars in there, too. Oh, yeah. (laughs) What is a car? That's what I was afraid of. (laughs) Carriage, flying carriage. (laughs) I just made that same mistake. Device. <laughs> uh, that's what I was afraid of. All right. You don't like flying? I no. I just want to save the world. All right. I guess we explore save the tower. The world? What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, we're here to kill the frostbane. How are you going to do that from Yithrin? Power. We're figuring it out along the way. The goal was to find something to permanently end the winter, and at the same time, to sate our... It's going to piss her off. It's going to piss her right off, and then she's going to come. I understand, Valin. Yes, yes. Our goals are definitely aligned. Why is he winking at you? I don't... I've made no secret of this. I'm taking whatever I want here, and I am also interested in helping you all find whatever the thing is in Uh, this. Yes, I'm sure... I'm sure there will be a great weapon in your battle here. Yes. You're a strange man. Insight? I I just point to Tempest. (laughs) Yeah, I didn't. (laughs) So me too. I just point to Tempest's axe. <laughs> and then I turn back to Valin. Uh, mutually beneficial. Yes. I don't yes. understand. I'm going to keep walking towards the grove. <laughs> okay, um, wait, so are you guys going to the tower or the grove? Um, I'll, uh, I'll wait for them in the tower. You go. Yeah. Mm. Fine. We haven't been able to find the entrance, so now we need to find the entrance to the tower. Okay. 
Oh, sorry. The entrance that was not immediately discernible is that center tower. Oh, okay. um, this one has a door right in the little front area. Oh, okay. <laughs> I will uh, uh, cast Detect Magic, because I am very excited to see how they did abjuration the Netherese. Um, <laughs> it reveals an aura of abjuration magic. <laughs> and you can <laughs> see it. <laughs> Runes cover every inch of the tower's exterior. Um, can I please get an Arcana check? Gladly. I would have done it without you asking. <laughs> Do the different magics, like, are they different colors? Or uh, just I, like wavelengths? Yeah, so it kind of depends on the vision. And I think that, um, I don't know how all of you see it, but in my mind, uh, the colors might be different for each viewer, but they're always distinct for that person. Mm -hmm. um, so I always have kind of seen abjuration as being like a like a light, warm, purpley color. Mm -hmm. But twenty four, twenty four. Um, as you are scanning across, uh, one of these glyphs does not match the rest. The coloring is different, and. It appears to be, <coughs> excuse me, it appears to be uh, uh, a mm -hmm. uh, conjuration. Oh, well, uh, do I feel like that's meaningful in some way? Uh, it does feel like it may be a trap. All right, I will dispel it. Okay. <laughs> Feels like trap. Do I need to use a spell, or can I use Arcana to dispel it? Uh, it would be a spell. Okay, I can do that too. Yeah. Uh, spell magic. I don't know if it's like counter spell, right? If you have to like get a spell. No, I just meant can I ritually cast it, but I can't. Mm -hmm. Alright, I cast dispel magic at third level. Let me check one thing here. I apologize. You check as many things as you like. <laughs> fancy new wizard. So he casts magic in a very, very like traditional because he teaches magic. So like he does the exact hand gestures and and his magic just has like a kind of light to it. Like it's very boring. Crisp. Yes, it's very crisp. It's very like his hand gestures are perfect. He intones perfectly. Um, and his magic language that he uses for his spells is a combination of primordial and infra. Oh, I understood some of it then. God, I can't wait for him to, to watch Altus cast magic and just have his eyes turn in some black. <laughs> um, as you cast it, you feel this pushback against what you're doing as if the energy of the surrounding area has all been turned against this action. Hmm. And as you push through that, the glyph dissolves. Whew. Nasty bit of magic. Uh, it's almost as if the city is aware. <laughs> I'd be shocked if it wasn't. Well, shall we enter? Because <laughs> now, having dis de destroyed any traps, because there's no such thing as physical traps. Right? <laughs> <laughs> After you. <laughs> but I stop here like, you want to go first, squishy man? <laughs> yes, it's a dead, abandoned city. What dangers could there be? <laughs> All right. After you, I, oh. I mimic what else is there. <laughs> uh, he, he, in very, very, like, textbook infernal, goes, no, 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 of course, ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> I go in. <laughs> and then he explains to you, my mother was a conjurer, so she insisted that I learn the outside of languages. Yeah, your accent's really good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, within a huge gap, I'm gonna stay outside, and okay. after all of this, I'm gonna see if there's any animals uh, around anywhere. Um, go ahead and roll a nature check. <laughs> you can oh, chat with an animal. Uh, 11. Uh, doesn't seem to be, at least not here. Mm. You could ask Hugo for, or you could ask a Z for, for a pet. <laughs> no, I just wanted to like get the lay of the land if there was um, one. And he has a pet. Yeah. I, I know. Am, I am a pet. <laughs> oh, I meant, I meant yeah. Mordecai. <laughs> um, I'll still stay outside while we okay. go in and explore. The rest of you then, a huge anvil chiseled with vivid blue ruins rest at the center of a 30 foot diameter 30 foot high circular chamber. 
Resting atop it is a hammer adorned with matching runes. <gasps> Six armored figures stand guard around the anvil. At the rear of the chamber, the frozen corpse of a wizard lies in a pile of rubble. Blue flames flicker from braziers spaced around the room, illuminating a carved inscription on the ceiling. Molly probably know what that said. What does it say? <laughs> <laughs> um, how are you going to read it? Uh, well, first of all, detect magic. I'm assuming everything's magic, but is there anything significant? Um, all of the statues have a strong, uh, have strong aura, as well as the anvil and hammer. I got okay. hard eyes for that hammer, so uh, I'm circling. So he goes he immediately, he immediately gets <laughs> very serious. He's like, everyone Shh, be calm, calm for a while while I determine exactly what is going on here. Abjuration is a tricky, tricky science that often it's not like evocation. Oh, where, well, you where, figure out how to abjure that hammer into my hand. Well, that would be conjuration, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but can I make an arcana check on all the runes and the script? Um, so go ahead. Uh, this, the Do I recognize the language? The script, while the runes are more um, of a broad yeah. arcane tradition, the script itself uh, is written in Nethery's. So I will ask Professor Scant for a translation. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, it reads in the Draconic script, uh, First shield thy heart with a wand from the nether oak. Well, what from the water what? A wand from the nether oak. Okay. A wood, a I see. From, the, from a tree. Well, it seems that if that's the case, and then can I make an arcana check on the runes? Sure. That's not all, is that all it says? That's all it says. Oh, okay. Never mind. I don't necessarily understand what's going on, so I go, it would be impossible to overcome this this trial without the the wand, clearly. Because <laughs> I only got a 12. <laughs> oh, I read Draconic. Sorry. Can I do an Arcana trick on it? It's Netherese, but in a Draconic script. Yeah. All right. Throw a pebble at the head. What? We did that earlier. Uh, it bounces off <laughs> and pings, and there is the feeling as if something electrical has been turned on. There's oh this... no! We should exit. We should exit immediately. And as you I see, it. the statues, all six statues around the room begin to gain color starting at their feet <laughs> and shifting up through their armor yes, yes. Yes, yes. into <laughs> their faces as uh, you are greeted by... We gotta fight for the hammer. That makes sense. It does not. This is not how wizards behave. <laughs> oh, oh, sexy. This is that word that always makes me think of you. <laughs> <laughs> They all stand still. But they're colored now. Yes. All right. Well, we were just leaving, so... Type thoughts. Nothing. Yeah. Figured. <coughs> Are you guys pl done playing around in there? I am, for sure. Oh, wow. Uh, Right. But we now know we need to find an Elder Oak Wand. As you all leave, the last of you out the door hears the hum recede as the color recedes and they return to stone statues. Professor, could this be some kind of, I don't know, a, a test of sorts? Uh, what was the culture like uh, among the wizards? Was there a, a power structure or...? Uh, there was with uh, the lich at its height, but this to me appears to be some sort of guarding state. Uh, I'm not sure if it was a test or just intended to keep thieves away. Hmm, but they had programmed in a key, so obviously they intended for this to be found even in their demise. A key? Well, the Elder Oak Wand. If that is a key. Well, I mean, if they 
puzzle, as it were, uh, uh, spoke of it. Uh, I, I do sometimes moonlight in a dungeoneering class, and this is very classic for uh, that kind of situation. Well, I would trust all of you to make whatever decision you would like. I am merely here to provide the information with which all of you can do whatever wrong you wish. Oh, when we get back to Waterdeep, we're going to write so many novels, Scant. <laughs> well, if you need something of Elder Oak, the only thing within the city that we've seen even resembling trees is where we're going, so... Yes, Lady Tempest, um, uh, is there no surname? Tides. Oh, Lady Tides uh, seemed to be right on the mark for what okay. we needed to do. <laughs> it's just politeness. <laughs> Oh, okay, Lord? No, I'm not going to go. No, uh, just Mr. or Professor. Professor is my title. Oh, okay. I guess you earned that. Professor Eltershire, yes. Uh, Tempest, would it... I, I was just going to go with D-hole. Okay. <laughs> How did you know my middle name, D-hole? <laughs> I, um... And then in Halfling, I say to myself, I can't believe this guy. <laughs> As you all make your way around this uh, encircled section, um, closer to this grove now, uh, you passed eight tusk-like towers embedded in the walls of a monumental building, their spires o- arching over a shattered roof. What's oh. this thing look like, too? That is going directly over all of you and you have to walk through its shadow as you make your way across. Um, it's unclear what would be inside of it, but it almost appears to be a giant metal um, uh, metallic tree root with the way that it's shaped, like if you were to see a mangrove with that coming out. Um, almost uh, natural in its beauty with the same level of smooth workmanship that you've seen in other nethery structures. And all this workmanship and architecture is totally foreign to us, right? Nothing looks familiar. Only or... in that you've seen it um, in that way, waypoint. Okay. But that's the only place you've seen anything like this before. Otherwise it is. So couldn't really even guess what that thing is for. Uh, what, the, like the... the yeah, I just there? really, what the hell is uh, it? <laughs> not out front okay. no okay. and it definitely seems like the base of the tower is also meant to look like roots so at least it's congruent mm-hmm. in that way uh but professor scant uh, is there any significance to this tusked building here <laughs> oh uh, from what i've seen of the maps it appears to be possibly the house of the arcane it's an academy plays novice magicians <laughs> Are you want to go in there? Well, I just think the teaching tools alone might give us information about what we're doing here. <laughs> Across from that building, there is also a tower engraved with interlocking circles of stone, yellow light spilling from its topmost window, and the faint sound of brooms pushing on stonework drifting through its broken doors as you're about per- halfway between each of these two buildings. And that's the only place that's had lights from within? Um, the punctuation did as well. Okay. Uh, which tower is this, Scant? Um, Conjuration. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, uh, if I might make a suggestion, um, if this is an academy, that means they have records and histories of Yethrin. Um, it might give us some thought process into how to access the spire. Sure. That's, that's not incorrect, yeah. Unfortunately, we won't be able to read anything, but, um... Hmm. Well, we have... Okay, don't we? Well, I just meant we wouldn't be able to split up and, yeah. and go through the research ourselves. I am very fine with you and Scan going and then <laughs> going to the forest. <laughs> well, yes, think... meet, meet back with us at the, at the forest? Well, if there is some kind of automated defenses, it might be dangerous. <clears throat> I think we need to stick together. <laughs> Yeah, we're bound to run into something Sorry. nasty in any minute. I mean, the caves yeah. leading here were We've rife with people you know. <laughs> with xenobiology. And I I'm, suppose. I'm just, I, it would seem impossible that none of those things came down into the city at some point. <laughs> I love I'll, your optimism. I'll stay outside again. 
Oh, Hugo, this is such a unique opportunity. <laughs> Mr. Thistleweaver. Oh, yes. <laughs> As okay. you all open the door to enter in, there is a sound of a creak. And from behind you, out from the base of the tower, rushes one of those turquoise soldiers along with what appears to be nine a others. similar mage. As they make a beeline towards all of you, the cracked and broken doors of the academy open before you. That is where we'll end tonight. What? So, thank you all so much for joining oh. us. Uh, I know this is a little bit of a shorter episode because we had some major technical difficulties today, um, which will be resolved next week because I figured out what they were with the help of support. Um, so, we want to say thank you, uh, especially to all of our patrons. All of you watching, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate you guys. Thanks, Chef. And everybody that comes on uh, on YouTube and watches as well, thank you. And thank you to our patrons, Sparky, Dossie, Daniel, Scott, Rio's mom, Alistair, Sean, and Johnny Mac. Uh, and one more reminder that we have that other one shot that'll be up next week or is on Twitch presently with us <laughs> Carnival. So yeah, go check them out. And uh, we'll be back in about a half an hour with the possibly conclusion, but no matter what thrilling <laughs> episode of A Deep and Creeping Darkness. We'll come up with a tagline eventually. Eventually. eventually.